Okay, my review of Doctor Who Wild Blue Yonder. First thing, like the video, thank you very much. So, I just want to say, first thing, I want to say to the BBC, please don't copy strike my videos or copyright my videos, unblock them. I'm a single mother of three babies. Every time you uh, copy strike my videos, you steal food from my baby's mouth. So, please, 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 uh, unblock me and remove the copyrights. Thank you very much. So, first thing, this episode was amazing, really great. Um, like, you can see the difference from the first episode, uh, the first episode with um, the Rose character and this episode. Like, I got a lot of pushback from the, uh, my review. I said it was like a walk vehicle for like trans issues, right? Other issues, it wasn't a proper story. Like, you can see the difference between that episode and this episode. It's not even the same league. This one was a lot better. It was amazing. This is like a proper Doctor Who episode. So, let me just start it off, yeah? There was... Like, like... Starting. Like, I'm gonna say, nothing's, uh, nothing's perfect in this world, right? Well, this is episode's really up there with the best Doctor Who episodes in the modern era. Um, but... There's maybe one or two things that, you know, you might classify it as walk. So it's right at the beginning, right? So it's like... Okay, 1666. Dude, who's this? Is this another Doctor Who? Is it a Time Lord? Who is this Asian character? Oh my god, we're gonna get an Asian, uh, we're gonna get an Asian, uh, Doctor Time Lord. That's amazing. No, it's, uh, no, he's not an Asian Time Lord. The dude is I Sir Isaac Newton. They just changed his race for... Uh, the BBC is just changing their race to make, uh... Wait, is that new? So the... The BBC are changing his race yes, why is he... to make, uh, I don't know, brown people like myself happy that they see themselves represented represented on TV. Um, I thought it was a bit weird. I don't know if you're watching this as a white person, wouldn't you be weird that they changed the race of this character? They're changing history in a way, right? Um, so there's lots of, I'm sure there's a lot of... Um, people throughout history that are brown like um professors scholars people who have created things inventors all kinds of great people they could have what they could have done here is just gotten one of those people and done the same thing with isaac newton but just have an actual c character that is a historical brown person you, then you would have taught the viewer the audience something new about history oh shit oh, oh my god i never knew he did that that's amazing and it was a and um, it would give what well, it would represent. It would, you know, a person who was brown watching the, this would think, "Well, wow, yeah, it's cool. I never knew about that about my own people." Yeah, there are a lot of uh, amazing people who are like uh, brown, different brown people that are, you know, amazing and they have a history. But he didn't do that. It just, you know, just changed the character of Isaac Newton. Now he's a, uh, yeah, he's um, Indian. Yeah, looks like he looks like Indian. Yeah, Isaac Newton is Indian. That's the only... Listen, this didn't bother me as much as I thought, but it was weird. Like, like people keep asking me in my last uh, episode that I just kept saying walk. Isn't this walk, like, changing? Isn't this weird? They changed his, uh, changed his, uh, uh, you know, his race. Don't you think that's a bit weird? No? Because all the comments I was getting on my last video was trying to, like, brainwash me into believing things that just didn't seem right to me. Right? Now, can somebody comment down below and tell me this is not walk? They changed his race. Isaac Newton. Um, I think he's a famous um, scientist. He worked out the equations for gravity. Uh, there he is. Yeah. I don't think this is woke. That changed his... Uh... Okay. Yeah, okay. Now, I'm not going to go on about it. But this is an example of what I'm saying about wokeness. Okay? This is a woke example. They changed it. All right? Like I said, you could have done it in a lot of better ways. Alright, there he is. 
All right, let's go. So that was, I'm not going to say, that was just a tiny thing that happened earlier on. Um, there was one other thing, which I don't know if I'm going to classify it as work. So the story starts there, like, uh, I think in the beginning of uh, the first special, Donna drops some tea on the console and the uh, the TARDIS hay goes haywire and they end up on this ship, right? They end up the ship, they don't know what the ship is, they don't know anything, right? And they in that the TARDIS disappears because it's under some kind of system protocol where if it senses danger it will just leave for a bit it'll just go until that danger goes away apparently when the TARDIS was regenerating or whatever it was um it that activated and you know the Time Lord um the Doctor Who he forgot to turn it off so the major spoilers for this story throughout <laughs> okay I'm gonna spoil the whole thing don't watch Okay, watch. Go watch it. It's go watch this. <laughs> go watch this. You're gonna get spoiled. Then come back and watch me. Okay, so I'm gonna say that they get the they. It's a spaceship. They're on the corridor and it's working. They try and work out everything about this uh, ship, right? Then there's like large corridor that goes into forever. It's massive, it, and they start talking and they talk. Don is like, oh. Isaac Newton, he's fit, isn't he? He was hot. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was really hot. And then Dr. David Tennant, he's like, uh, yeah, he's hot. He's really hot. And in, on those, along those lines. And then he says to him, like talking to himself, so, oh, that's who I am now. I realise. Like he's realised, that's who I am. He's realising that he's attracted to uh, men. Um, yeah. So I guess, what does that mean? Does that mean uh, when David Tennant was... Um, original time lord he was not attracted to men i thought you know the time lord i don't know what his sexuality was no i guess i don't know i think they're probably paving the way that the new time i, I don't know who the new time lord is um i forgot his name one second let me check it okay i don't know who the new time lord is um i think he was in um other tv programs the new time lord he's a black fellow and i've forgotten his name leave it down in the comments if you remember what his name is um, I think he, that actor, is, he's um, gay too, and that's why they're paving the way, maybe they're paving the way that in the next, uh, once David Tennant is gone and the other guy comes in, um, that doctor will be, uh, will, well, he will like men, which I think I, I'm pretty much from what I've read before is, yeah, I think he, he's going to be, you know, he's going to like men, and he's just, they're just setting that up for the next you know, when the next Doctor comes in. So maybe those two, you know, Isaac Newton and that comet were the two woke things, maybe. I don't know if you can class the second one as woke, but maybe those two things probably will work. Uh, so it was a great episode. They come in, they're in the spaceship. I loved it. They try and work out this mystery. Uh, they're trying to work out where they are. Um, so the ship, they said it's gone through a wormhole, right? It's gone through a wormhole. And it's ended, ended up to the edge of the universe. There are no stars. When they look out, there are no stars and nothing. It's, and do, even the doctors, he doesn't know what's going on. Because he's never, I don't think he's ever been to the edge of the universe. I don't know. I don't know all of the classic hosts, But so they're trying to work out why is the ship, what you call it, what's happening. Because they found this robot there. And it's just an old ass robot walking really slowly. They're, they're wondering what's the situation on here. And I think there there are what I liked about it is like there's just the Doctor and the Donna on this episode all alone trying to work out a mystery, right? I like I like the dialogue. I like the I liked everything about it. Um, so they start. I think they start looking through the ship, trying to fix things, trying to work out what how do you call it what what happened, and that's when um. You see, like, certain off, like, somebody's watching them, right? Like, in the vents, somebody's watching them. Um, these things appear. They're, like, first of all, they're on individual rooms. One's working in another room. One's working in, I think, another room. And so Donna's just talking, doing her thing. The doctor comes into that room. And you think that's the doctor. It's not the doctor. It's some kind of shape-shifting entity that's taken on the appearance of the doctor the doctor's in the other room he's working and donna walks in and then she okay oh uh, okay let's not spoil all of it right this is uh 
I loved the like body horror got uh, of this show like he did so much with you know with what he had going for him like he did so much with the story to make you feel scared to shock you just a simple thing look at the body horror on this why with the arms it's so very difficult like russell t davis all credit given he was able to uh um accomplish so much with i don't think there's a age rating on doctor he was able to accomplish so much to scare me scare anybody watching this from these monsters so th that's really amazing credit given to him so look i got i was watching this i got the thing vibes you they're going to the ship you get a uh, uh, you get uh, Event Horizon vibes because it's gone through a wormhole and it's just ended up barren. You, you get all these vibes from it. Some p person told me in the comments you, they got Lovecraft vibes from this. So it was really good. Let's, let's look at this one. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy. Why does he travel with someone as stupid as you? <laughs> that was scary, no? Look, this bit, this bit was... Look, was David Tent... This was not, like, CGI. I think David Tent just did it back... Did a little backflip or something, right? And he just they slowed it down or something, right? Look, that, that looks like... Him, that's not a special effect. That's just him turning it back and doing that. <laughs> That was really good. And so there was references to uh, the Timeless Child and the Flux. So let's look back. All right, let's look look at this. What? No, because it's right in fact, the person is that under. Yeah, but I didn't know that's what I did. And if I didn't know. So the, these, these beings, evil beings, they are from the edge of space. They've gone into the ship. And they're trying to scan the minds of the Doctor and Donna. And they're trying to become completely like them. Reason being, they will, their plan is to get back to off the edge of the universe. Back to where civilization is. And just to cause destruction, right? They're like formless beings. Um, the re they are they want to simulate Doctor and Donna. So when the TARDIS comes in, the TARDIS won't know anything. That they're going to be exactly the same, right? But they'll have some kind. They'll be evil, really, and they'll just be able to get on the TARDIS. TARDIS won't do anything, and they'll just be able to fly out with it, and they're gone. So they they they're running around the what you call it ship, and they're trying to figure out who. If they're talking to the Doctor, is this really the Doctor? Is this really Donna? Because they're getting fooled. And that means I'm real. So are you from? No, but well, we've done that. We talk about that. By there, I laugh. All four of us. No, it's careless, right? Except it's not. See, reference to uh, the Timeless Child, and the Doctor apparently is not from Gallifrey, he's from like a portal that's just opened up, and he was found underneath the portal by Gallifreyan, I don't know, by his mother, I think, or his adopted mother. Um, so I think, my theory is that Russell T. Davis didn't like the Timeless Child, and he's going to do something about it, right? He probably knows the fans were pissed off, he didn't like it, so he's going to change the story somehow um maybe make it better um undo it somehow like a timey-wimey thing do something he's gonna fix it right it, <laughs> he probably hated it himself Dr. Donna. I saw him online. 
I've had 15 years without you, and I saw everything that's happened to you since, and oh my god, it hurt. So, Donna's saying that she's had some part of her mind. Are you saying Donna has some part of mind on the, those 15 years? Subconsciously, she had knew everything. Subconsciously, right at the back of her mind, that it was there. Psych! <laughs> okay, well, this is, uh, so they. So, let's have a look. They mentioned the flux in this part, right? The flux. The flux. They destroyed half the universe because of me. Dude, it did destroy half the universe, but I thought you, uh, I thought the last time Lord, uh, you know, uh, reset the universe somehow and she brought it all back. Um, I think there was some one throwaway life a line that they reset it, but I don't. Now you're telling me the half the universe is destroyed and. Look, we all know how when Gallifrey was destroyed, he was like upset for the whole bloody first season, right? He was like devastated now. De devastated probably season two as well. I'm just saying um, now half the galaxy is destroyed. Are you saying it's still destroyed or is just pissed that it was destroyed and he's fixed it now? I'm not exactly sure. If it's still destroyed, wouldn't that cause lots of chaos in the universe? It's like um, spoilers for Endgame. Endgame, half the, all the people in the universe were zapped out turned to dust and that i'm um, uh, that caused a lot of chaos in that universe so when it caused chaos in this universe i don't know i just i don't know i'm sure they fixed the time uh, they fixed the half they fixed the universe before they ended it i mean what the hell okay you're telling me it's not fixed is is russell gonna fix the universe you're gonna fix the other half oh. are you saying that the reason Maybe the reason that he got the face, David Tennant came back, is what? It was linked to the flux? Because he, he felt guilty? I don't... Oh my God, no. We stand here now, on the edge of creation. The creation which I devastated. So yes, I keep running, of course I do. How am I supposed to look back on that? It wasn't your fault, but no! So he keeps running. I feel like that's a reference to something else. Um... <sighs> We stand here now, on the edge of creation, the creation which I've devastated. So yes, I keep running, of course I do. How am I supposed to look back on that? It wasn't your fault, but no! Was it his fault? Oh, I don't think it was his fault. So they are trying to fix their bodies. They're still kind of getting used to having a fixed form. Early on, they all like their arms are getting big and their jaws are getting big and their bodies are getting big. And they're trying to fix themselves until they're set. Like, you know, like a fucking pudding or cake. They're completely set. Later on, they, you know, they, they lose their ability to... Well, they don't lose it. I think they just just get used to being one, like, solid mass. Here, they're still wibbly-wobbly. <laughs> Like a jelly. They're still more like a jelly. They're not done. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a great episode. I think they're going to fix Timeless Child and the Flux. Maybe they're going to go back to the Flux and do something. Maybe those two storylines that uh, Russell didn't like. Maybe he didn't like those storylines. I don't know. Um... See, let me look at my notes. Let me look at my notes, right? Uh, one second. So I'm just gonna say, go watch the episode. Great episode. Probably watch it again. And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about my first. Yeah. I'm going to make a next video. I think the next uh, episode, episode three, will come out next Saturday sometime. It was half past six today. 
So I'm not probably helps. I don't know. You need to go check the times. So I'm just going to talk about my first review, the one. Um, which, what was it called? Well, my first episode, right? Uh, the um, with that little fair ball thing. Yeah, so I had comments on that video. I just want to talk through them, and it was. Let's have a look. These comments, right? Don't feel bad about like making comments, but I'm just saying, right? Like this guy, right? So we'll just read this first one. TF, are you talking about? Are you a real fan of Doctor Who? Yes, I am. Doctor Who was and always been woke. It's always been like this since the very beginning. Was it? I mean, what? I have not watched all the episodes. Was it a um, lot of LGBT in the black and white episodes? You know, a lot of LGBT uh, representation. A uh, lot of uh, characters like that. Um, uh, was it? I don't know. I've not watched all the episodes, so I can't say. Uh, let me know in the comments of this video if it was uh, all as a uh, woke or uh, representation, LGBT, everything else. So they had many characters were lesbian and gay from the very long time, for a very long time. I didn't know this. I mean, um, is this from the episodes or books or comics? I don't know. Hell, Doctor Who's first director who started or was a gay man from India. Listen, I don't know if he was gay or not. They also had LGBT cats play roles before. So, this guy's saying, it's always been um, LGBTQ+. Don't know. I mean, I've not watched all of um, Tom Baker's episodes. Maybe he was doing, uh, having um, relationships with men that I've not seen happen. I mean, let me know in the comments if you saw those episodes. Uh, so, I I don't remember there being any lesbian or gay people in this video, right? That's my reply. So, he's talking about LGBT rep representation, and, and then he starts talking about lesbian and gay, and there's none of that in the video. I don't know if this guy even watched my video, right? I don't know. He might have watched two minutes, he might have just read the title, and he's made the comment, and... And sometimes his comments not even making sense. He's talking about lesbian and gay. There wasn't even a lesbian gay in the thing. There was a maybe Rose was non-binary. That was it. But uh, <sighs> so next person replies down. Not this episode, but the classic series as well. As a new so the classic was uh, LGBTQ. You know the black and white ones. So okay, uh, as the new. But the classic series, as well as the new, have had many characters and actors in the LGBTQ, ranging from gay, lesbian, bi, pan, asexual, trans, including Rose, Noble in this, non-binary, etc. So Matt is saying, he's pack, uh, backing up this guy. I don't know, man. I feel like uh, I'm being like, there's another reality. Am I like living in a different reality and they're trying to trick me? Is this a trick? I mean, is there multiple accounts with the same people trying to, oh, this guy saying it and this guy saying, is this Matt and him, the same person, trying to, me? <laughs> trying to brainwash me into believing into something else? I know the first episode was trying to brainwash me. Can you see the difference between the first season special and this one? This should have been the first one. Instead, he used the first one, some kind of trans vehicle to talk about trans issues, which he could have done, but he didn't, re didn't write it properly. Can you see the difference? Can you see what I was complaining about? It's so, if you put these two things together, you can see how different they are and how, what you call it, they don't, you can see the difference in quality, right? You, you can see, the, oh God. Okay, so, Matt's replied to me again later on. So Matt, he's come back to me, right? So he, Matt, I appreciated, so I've had other comments and they were just like, they were turning me to shit or something like, along those lines saying shit or your opinion shit or something. And I just, it was so little feedback, I just blocked them from the whole, whole of my channel, blocked them. Because I didn't feel like they were, it was very constructive feedback, they're just saying shit. They're not saying what's shit, they're not going into this guy, he just go into it. So I left him alone. What an ignorant review. You're whining about binary 
but it was one of the doctor's last words. Yes, it was one of her last words, but I don't think that was the intent, right? Uh, when she was saying binary, uh, when her, what's you call it, mind was like getting, you know, pff, you know, that meta crisis was messing with her mind. I don't think that was the meaning. It's now, 15 years later, it's been given another meaning, right? Non-binary, binary, binary, non-binary. So it's given another uh, walk agenda, but uh, to call it meaning that the Russell T. Davis has done. It didn't mean that originally, but it was one of the Doc Donner's last words before being overwhelmed by the meta crisis 15 years ago. You harp on dead naming as if it's a big deal, which it isn't. Well, you know, I think like you know, haven't people lost the name for like dead naming and stuff? <sighs> I don't know, man. I think it is a big deal when you're forcing people to use certain names. I mean, I would do it out of courtesy, but I don't think I should be forced or legally forced or be threatened with my job being pushed out or anything like that. I mean, I'll do it because you have asked me or it's a polite thing to do, but I don't think I should be forced to do it. Okay. The David Trent, but it's not... Okay. Uh, dead naming as if it's a really big deal, which it isn't. You call David Tennant... You call him David Tennant, but that's not his born name. What is that? What? I, he's trying to make a point. Maybe I'm not getting it. It's his stage name. So I think he's saying dead name and he's making some kind of connection there. I think that's the thing. I've read it again. I'm, I don't know, man. Is that the same thing? Changing your name and, yeah, I guess changing your name, dead naming, and calling somebody by another name when they've changed their name. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that makes sense. All right. Like, the doctor isn't their born name, but one that character has chosen. And your assumption of they think they're better than yours is completely bi biased, baseless. And your assumption... Okay, so he's made a good point. Like, if somebody changes their name, and somebody else keeps calling them from the old name, it's a bit weird, right? You could say that, but I don't think that person who keeps calling you with the old name should have... It depends on the tent, but I don't think it should be like they should be forced into saying your new name but i understand it's unusual if you kept saying the old name thank you for watching so i'm so polite to this fellow i'm so polite i don't know if you can pick this up on the camera thank you for watching heart i'm going to review the next episode maybe you will like that video better so i didn't kick him out so he goes on replies to me it's right at the bottom if your next review is as soft for moment Dude, don't use big words, you know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Don't use those little words, yeah? Soft for Morik, and you reply on extended clips from other media too. What? Look, what's the... Yeah, I use extended clips. At least you, you got me... You, I'm using an example, right? you got some clip that you can see. I'm saying something, you can see the clip. I'm not making it up. You can also get the same ideas from where I'm coming from. It's easy to... You know, get my ideas to you if I play a clip. Vocalize your distaste. I highly doubt your reviews will improve. Well, I don't know. I think you just watched one review you haven't watched them all. Especially when you uh, ascribe woke to things you're just opening bigger to the back. So he calls me a bigot. Um, yeah, he calls me a bigot. But I'm not a bigot. It's just name calling. So he's just uh, like appealing my character, make me look like an idiot. Like calling me a bigot. I was going to ban him right there. But we'll see if he comes back and he behaves himself. Um, I I did like that he actually watched the whole video. Pretty much from what he said, it looked like he's watched my whole video and he's rolled it back. So I appreciate that. And I was genuinely happy that he's watching my video. And I did thank him about it. But if he's calling me a bigot for no reason, just because I'm not, you know, um, fully... Like, I look, it's about a time-traveling alien in a space box, in a police st station box, and he travels through times, time, he has adventures, goes different planets, different times, he has companions, he has a good time, he's very interested, some social issues as well, but he has a good time, that's pretty much the story, I don't, it's not really about what, it's not really about what, I don't know, it's not, all these tr issues, LGBT, uh, trans issues, it could have been done a lot more subtly, a lot better. And it's not like R Russell T. Davis doesn't do other uh, programs, right? He does year. He did one called Years and Years and Years, and that had LGBT characters. So he could just make the whole 
whole other episode series uh, just about trans issues, right? Like there's a, a TV show called Poise, Poise, and that's all about trans people. Uh, set in the 80s and 90s about dance culture in New York. So he could just do that whole thing and educate people like that. But really, you need to do in Doctor Who, and he's already said this in an interview, is that if you get them young, you can educate them about all these issues. So he's already... Dude, I don't want to be educated. I just want to enjoy my science fiction. I don't need any lectures, okay? So let's have a look at the next comments. That's him. Bye, Matt. No, this is Matt. I was going to say no hard feelings, but you can reply. Don't be shocked. You can reply. I find your comment, everybody's comments are very really good, helpful. You know, criticism is good. It's good to have a dialogue. I don't think it's fair that you call me a bigot. We're having a dialogue and you can talk back to me and we can just figure things out. But it's not, it's not call people names, yeah? So, this guy. Okay, this guy. He was off the moment I woke up and I read this comment and I think he the first two like you vile little thing right banned him straight away so this guy banned him from the whole channel he can reply he's the only one who sees his comments I never see his comments nobody will see his comments I don't know if he he's even commented right so he's the only one who sees his comments and I've banned him right so he's called me a vile little thing. I think he's coming off camp. Maybe he's doing a little camp thing, but it didn't it didn't react well to me. So let's read it. You vile little thing. Well, why don't kids need to be educated about dead naming? Well, I don't know, man. <sighs> maybe we can just enjoy a science fiction, and maybe you could do that in some other way. And like I've given you examples where you could do that. I'm 24, and I'm very grateful for its inclusion here. Since it's a topic I need a deeper understanding of. And the woke bits are neatly woven into a journey. No, they're not. You bloody liar. You phony. They're not what you call it, woven into. It was, a, it was a basic story. And it was just a vehicle for trans issues. You know that. And this guy is lying to me. He comes up with this whole story. Watch him story time. Watching this episode with my parents. Dude, he's watching it with his parents. Okay. Gave us the opportunity to discuss trans issues. So he's watched this episode and he's had, well, he's had the effect, right? He's had an open discussion with his family about trans issues. I'm sure if they'd said the wrong thing, he ripped their heads off. Would he rip their heads off? Or would he say, oh, maybe we should discuss that further? No, but he's on here. And this is me and him having a discussion, right? He's here replying and, and I'm having a discussion with him now. But he, well, this is what he says, which is something they rarely considered and something we've never discussed as a family. Dude, I think that's a lie. He's probably discussed with him lots of times. I think he's already made up his mind. It's not like the first time he's had uh, known about trans people. He's making up a story. This is a PSYOP comment, right? Trying to, which kind of people believe another reality. I think this whole thing's made up what he's saying. It's something we rarely cons consider and something we've never discussed as a family. This all sounds like bullshit. If you're still having to use the word woke, then you can F off back to the 20th century. So, very nice. Open discussion with his family. Has a discussion with me, tells me to F off. Very nice, very, really, very nice guy. And I hope you're not watching tonight if this is the way you feel. It's a deeply troubling sign of the times that we have so many adult men getting so deeply butthurt. Dude. You wrote a paragraph and I'm... Listen, if I'm butthead, butthead, you're butthead as well. You wrote a whole paragraph down here. I mean, you're butthead as well. And why are you calling me a grown man? Yes, yeah, so I'm a grown man. What, who cares? You're probably grown as well. You're 24. Uh, by a goofy piece of Saturday night... F so he calls Doctor Who. This is what he calls. This guy's probably... Uh, it seems like he's very activated, energized, yeah? So I'm thinking he's a fan of Doctor Who. But then he calls Dr. Hugh a piece of goofy Saturday night family entertainment about a time traveling alien. So he doesn't he doesn't take it seriously as well, right? He doesn't take it he doesn't take uh, it seems like he doesn't take it seriously, but he's energized because of what the trans issue. But I don't think he's even a fan. Because he's calling it goofy or something. Whatever. So yeah, this is where he gets it right. This is the truth part where he says, uh a Saturday night family entertainment about a time-travelling alien. Yeah, he's right. It's about a time-travelling alien. 
right? It's not about a whole episode about trans issues. It's about time traveling alien. He's in a police box with his companions, has adventures, goes to different planets, a little bit of social issues. Great. All right. It's not a whole. Can't you see the difference between the first, what you call it, special and this second one? What a goofy guy. Right, let's read uh, another comment section. This guy comes. Oh, shut it, mate. Nothing is more cringy than people who cry about walk. The, the agenda? What agenda is... Dude, it's obvious agenda. It's like, this is like gaslighting. Dude, I can see it with my own eyes. I can hear it, right? He's not... You asked uh, Russell T. Davis. He's He has an agenda. He's not hiding that agenda. Agenda? It's obvious. Disney has got an agenda. They've said they've got an agenda, right? So it's not something they're trying to hide. Agenda? You dummy. Agenda of being kind to people. The agenda of being kind to people who are different. Which is pretty much the entire plot of the 60 years of the show. Uh, God help me. I've been a fan since the 80s. And I've seen every episode. The new episode is absolute fun. Absolute fantastic. Dude, it was a garbage episode. Right? It's not worthy for the 60th anniversary. It's not worthy of Russell T. Davis. It was just because he wrote a bad story just to get his trans issue uh, agenda through t through that. Because he's really hang hook hooked up on that. Uh, hanged up on that. So, it wasn't a fantastic. It was not a fantastic. That's, an, that's a lie, mate. I know you believe all this trans... Fair enough. Trans issue is great. Needs more attention. But this was not a fantastic episode. I just want to... Science fiction episode, I don't want to be lectured to. I can't believe it's 2023 and people are still, still thin skinned and fragile. And Beta, he calls me Beta. So he, so he's called me Beta and Alpha and this is like, I'm not max, masculine. And what's his, Andrew uh, Tate kind of language, right? Uh, the red pill kind of language. So is that good? I don't think that's a good thing. That can't deal with the fact that there are gay people in the world. Dude! Uh, Captain um, Jack Harkness, right? Um, that's the only gay character. He's very likable, right? Uh, he was in a lot of episodes. Um, he wasn't gay. He was bisexual, right? He was flirting with Rose. Um, he might have flirted with a dude. Yeah, but he was very likable. And th when he was in it... Um, I know that in Torchwood he was more gay than, you know, he seemed to be more, you know, I think he had more boyfriend. But in, um, in Doctor Who, um, he's a very likable character. It, at that time when he came on, I didn't feel like it was just his character, he was gay. I didn't feel like there was some secret thing that was trying to brainwash me or brainwashing other people or anything. He was just a gay character. He was a nice guy. I liked him. A lot of people liked him. It, and there's nothing wrong with him that's i didn't feel like i was there's no nothing to it right there's nothing but now i know there's something to it back then there wasn't any agenda there was no agenda he was just a gay character now there is an agenda and i feel funny about it right if they were just gay characters and i'd be uh, okay is this a story good story characters are gay fine there's no big deal it's same gay is the same as being straight right it's just gay or straight it is what it is but this, this is some kind of brainwashing going on but the whole episode wasn't that episode with the meep that first special was um it wasn't it wasn't about gay was it it was it was non-binary it was about not roles of non-binary so i don't even this guy has watched it He's not watched my thing, he's just read the title, maybe watched two minutes, and he's made up his mind, because he's seen the word woke, and then he start, start talking about gay people. Uh, did he even watch the Doctor Who episode that I'm reviewing? I don't know, I, I, is these fans, or are these crazy people who just like come, in, come in and make comments? I think this guy's still on there. I didn't block him, because the, it's interesting to read these comments. Okay, so something positive to look at. Hippos 
very positive. Look, they're very beautiful. I like hippos. They look baby hippos. These are like the bozos in my comment section. I get a lot of good comments and thank you for those good comments. Uh, I love reading them. I reply. Uh, so a few bozos in the comments. They come. They have the entertainment value. Um, they look like babies to me. And look. They, you know, I'm just going to consider all those bozos as hippos, right? Happy, happy himbo. Happy, happy hi hippos. And there they are. See, nice and positively positivity in my head. Lovely hippos. Lovely baby hippo. So I'm just going to say, love this uh, episode. Amazing, amazing episode. Um, night and day from the first one. Like, so go watch it. Can't wait for the next one. Uh, like my video, subscribe to my channel. I'm 